Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to... Well, what are we going to do? We need to start making red circuits now that we've got green and plastic and copper. Um, but what I want to do first is connect this outside rail loop to here so I can get into the passenger station for the refinery and other places like that. Uh, so let's just head over here, first of all. Um, and by the way, the way I'm doing this is uh, you go into the train schedule, go to the map, and then you hold down control and just left click wherever you want to go, and that'll create the temporary station, in case uh, anyone was wondering how that happens. <clears throat> The other thing I think I'm going to do tonight is uh, I'm going to back up my save and I'm going to let it run all night. Whoops, stop. Uh, isn't there a way to make your train not continue the schedule automatically? when you do a temporary stop. I don't see any options for this. Hmm. Other? Nope. Okay. Well, that's too bad. Because I would prefer for the train just to stop and then go into manual mode. But um, I guess you can't have everything. All right, so let me first add another segment here. Maybe two. No, one's enough. All right, and then now let's do two. Uh, where was I? The rail book. Here we go. Okay, and we can add another one to that as well. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, right after this signal, I'm just going to throw in a diagonal rail. That goes all the way. <clears throat> and I've designed this all perfectly so that every signal that could interfere does. Alright, so let's put that one there. And let's put that one there. Okay, and then we'll put a signal there, we'll put a chain there, we'll put a chain there, we'll put a chain here, and then two chains there, and that, whoops, like that. <clears throat> okay, so that'll get us on, and now I should be able to back up a bit and send this to the passenger station, which was uh, refinery PAX. And if I don't put any weight condition, I wonder what will happen. Okay, um, and then I also need a chain there. I need a chain there. Oops. I need a chain there, and I got one there. Okay, so that should, yeah, that should cover us for those junctions. Um, and then. And then 
what if we want to get back onto the loop? If we're coming from that direction, let's see, we would want to do something like this, right? Okay. So let's be a little bit smarter about it this time and see if we can avoid interfering with all those. No, I'm not going to be able to avoid it. Oh yeah, I am. Awesome. Okay. All right, chain there. No, that's fine. That one has to be moved. It doesn't like where it is. Okay, going this way, we need a chain signal there. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got this wrong. It's on the wrong side of the tracks. If we're going this way, then that it just goes like that. Chain there, chain there, okay. Um, and I like the way that that is because then it'll just wait here before it crosses any of these. Nah, I guess we might as well. Oops, give it a little more flexibility. Okay, and then we'll want a chain signal there. Uh, going this way, we're fine. Going down, let's see, going up this way, we got that. Going across, coming down this way, we've got that. Okay. I think that's all right. Um, and then what we could do is we could put a Okay, I guess I don't have it. We can make a U-turn down here. Okay, that's there for reference. that one segment of straight track in order to make this work and be symmetrical. Otherwise it'll be it'll be too far on one side than the other. You have to have that one section in the middle. Ah, okay. See now my damn it. Now my train has a path to get home and it's taking advantage of that. All right, so we do need a weight condition, uh, circuit condition, and we'll just tell it to go back there. Of course, it's going to have to make the entire loop again, but uh, at least we know it works now. So once I put that, once I put that U-turn, then the train came out of here, it came down, and then turned around, so it could go back this way. All right. Um, and let's put a U-turn on this iron line as well. All right, so I'll just copy that and we'll put that right there. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that we could do is that. So that way we can get onto this 
section of rail. Okay, and then we'll need the same thing there. Okay. So now we should even be able to make use of um, of the smelting passenger station. Let me get rid of that. So let's try that and see if I've got a route to get there. And it appears that I do. So it'll turn around and then, oh, what's it doing? Ah, okay. Okay, so here's the other thing that we need to do. Let's connect that. And then of course that signal will have to move, but that is no problem. Okay, so now we can get onto there from either side. All right. Let's try going back to refinery. Nope. Um, okay. Let's go make that four ways. Well, I hadn't planned to spend quite so much time on this, but I think this will eventually make things easier. So I do have, I do have this junction that we can use up here. Okay, which is essentially the same thing, uh, but it gives us the ability to go from a from a two-way rail to, uh, or from, you know what I mean, from two-lane rail to one one lane. Uh, actually, now that I think about this, let me, I'm not sure if all those signals are right, so I'm just going to delete it and place it down again. Okay. So that should do the trick. All right. So now let's try to go back to refinery. Oh, it's still taking me around the long way. No, stop. Why is it still going the long way? I can go, I can go down here. And, okay, that's going to iron. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, Okay, I see. I see where I, I went wrong. <clears throat> I missed one of the <laughs> I missed one of the permutations of rail connections. So I need to be able to get from this one going south. And jump over to the next set of rails. And then I can get rid of these. Okay, um, yeah, and that's going to be right here. So I need to get rid of those signals. Put that there. Um, yeah, and I should put that right there. Okay, now it should be able to, get to make it. Yes. All right, so it'll come down, it'll turn around, and then come back up and then jump over. Right, here it comes. Okay, there it goes, around the loop, come back up, awesome. Okay, so now I can access all of these stations from the main base. 
This one I want to leave, but now this one I can remove. You know, like I said before, it would be nice to have more than one place uh, to get off of that outside rail. Uh, yeah, and then this is the exit portion of it, which we can also get rid of. And I don't know where these bots are taking all these things. Oh, okay. They're just going to any, any old storage chest. That's fine. It's not like it's a ton of material. Okay, so now we need to get green circuits, plastic, and copper connected so that we can make the red circuit factory. Uh, so let's try to figure out how that's going to happen. All right, so copper is going over here. Green circuits are over there. And actually, I think I said before that I want to make red circuits in the same area as green circuits, right? So um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, so what we need to do next is extend the rail from plastic so we can get up there. All right, so I think what we can do is we can extend this rail north, make a right turn, and then come up and run and run parallel to these tracks. Or I could go north. I wonder if I would have enough room. Let me try something here. No, I wouldn't have enough room to squeeze in between those, in between this these smelting areas. So, yeah. So I think the plastic's going to have to come north, and then I can I can cut east. Um, just well, let's just cut east, just north of iron two. That way, I'll leave room here for copper, and we'll leave a little bit of room to expand in case we decide we need to add more copper smelting. Okay, so fortunately we're already close by. Let me just grab some more rails and signals. Oh, um, let's set up the trains too uh, before we get too far along. So that's... Okay, and then if I'm not mistaken, uh, if I shift copy, I should be able to include trains. All right, I don't want to include the rocket fuel. Actually, I don't want anything except for the trains. All right, so now I should be able to copy paste. Ooh, that's really odd, isn't it? Okay, so maybe I should keep the rail to keep everything <laughs> lined up. I keep forgetting to press shift. Okay. So, uh, trains. No fuel. All right, so we'll keep the rail, we'll keep the signal, and the trains, and then hopefully that'll keep things all aligned. That's weird. That is, I'm not really comfortable with how that's working. What the heck? All right, well, let's try it. Are those all connected? Yeah, they are. Okay. I guess it worked. And we'll put one there. Okay. I'll just do these the old fashioned way. All right, and then we have our tankers. And 
those trains. All right, now let's adjust our colors. Uh, so this one is going to be pure white. All right, and then we can copy paste those settings. And then right now it's only got one station, which is plastic out until full. Okay, rocket fuel colors. Uh, that's a bummer. They don't have any suggestion for rocket fuel colors. Or solid fuel. Hmm. That is disappointing. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll just leave those red. Uh, lubricant. Yeah, uh, it's 170 on green. So that's zero. 170 and zero. So it's a nice bright green. And this will come to lubricant out until full. Uh, sulfuric acid is bright yellow, 255, 255, zero. Okay, so that's going to come to acid out until full. And then await further instructions. Now we could guess at a color for rocket fuel. Like if we did like a, it would be kind of cool if we could match that brown that brownish color. Let's see how we do here. So it's like red with a little bit of green mixed in. That, that doesn't look bad. Uh, no, I don't think we want any blue. Maybe a little bit less red. That looks pretty close, doesn't it? Okay, so that's rocket fuel out until full. I think that's pretty convincing. And then this is just gonna be a medium gray. So let's just try like 50, 50, 50. Let's see if that's, that looks great. Okay, and then this is going to be solid fuel. Wait until full. Lovely. It's a nice uh, rainbow of colors we have there. Okay, so let's go up to the smelting area. Which we can get to directly now. Almost directly. We have to go and do a U-turn and go back. I was raised in Michigan, and uh, in Michigan, the road systems, when you have um, when you have intersecting two-lane roads, or not two-lane roads, but when you have intersecting divided highways, you know, so where you might have two lanes in one direction, and then a gap and then two lanes in the other direction where two of those intersect. You can't make a left turn. You have to do what's called a Michigan left, which is you go through the intersection, you make a U-turn and then you make a right. So this kind of feels like a Michigan left to me. <clears throat> Anybody who's from Michigan, I'm sure knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, okay. Yeah, so I should have stayed down there. We need to we need to move the rail up. So let me work on that. Um, incidentally, uh, the next the next two to three days, um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very busy, and I think I'm not gonna be able to have time to make any videos uh, for the next couple of days. Um, Cause I've got some, I've got some stuff, uh, going on right after work. 
you know, so for the next couple of days, I'm, I'm going to my, my regular job. And then, and then as soon as I get out of work, I come home, um, eat something really quick, and then I have to leave again. So I don't think I'm going to have any time to record videos, unfortunately. Um, so if you see, uh, if you notice a, a gap of a couple days in my publication schedule, um, don't worry, I'll be back soon, but that's why. I didn't want to come this far north, right? Now I remember I wanted to turn as soon as I got across here. Okay, so let's do that. But first let's signal this uh, junction. And I don't want, um, whoops, I wanted this. Trees and rocks only, please. There we go. I just want these to cross. I don't want to be able to, to get from one to the other. So uh, the signaling here is fairly simple. I'll just put a chain signal there. Um, and I'll put a chain signal there. And that covers us in both directions, doesn't it? Let me make a, I'm going to make a cargo wagon. This is useful sometimes just to test your signals. Yeah, so it'll stop here. And then in these directions, we can put that signal there and that signal there. We'll lose those. And then a chain signal right there and a chain signal right there. Okay, so that should cover us. Oh, thank you. And again, we can use that little wagon just to, uh, just to test. Okay, so if this is occupied up here, that turns red. Perfect. If it's red down here, that turns red. If there's a train right here, they all turn red. Right, they're red in all four directions. Okay, so I think that's, I think that should be a trouble-free intersection. All right, now let's let's turn and let's see if we can let's see if we can make the turn with our usual gap. One, two, three. No, I don't think we're going to be able to make that turn. Okay, so let's see. There. That's the that's the tightest turn we can possibly make. All right, and let's uh, let's try to line these up like so. Is that aligned? It appears to be. So we might not actually get to Red Circuit Building today. But you know, this is uh, this is what building a mega base is like. You spend a lot of time you spend a lot of time building rail and throwing down beacons and not quite so much time running your factory. <laughs> Um, I can't tell if this is all signaled or not. Okay, I think it is. I'm not waiting for any any signals. Okay, good. This looks fine. So let's continue running this across. Yeah, there we go. Oh no, that's not what I want. I think I have a longer version of the of that straight segment. No, I don't. I just have the that grid. Okay, so we'll have to do it with these smaller segments. OK, 
Okay, and now these power poles are in the way. Um, so let me eliminate those. Actually, I don't, I don't think I need these anymore, do I? Let's take a look and see if anything ran out of power. Yes. Okay, well we can fix that. We'll just connect it. Oh, actually we can do it even more easily. There. Okay, now everything's still powered up. And we can continue running the rail over. That is a bummer. <laughs> and look how bloody long that is. Ugh, man, that sucks. All right, well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to bring that down here. And remove all that. Okay, and we might as well put the rail down while we're at it. Oh, I'm at a rail now. Okay. I guess we won't do that. Okay, and that's probably far enough. Okay. All right, where'd I leave my train? Let's bring the train back down to the refinery. That'll be faster. Okay, and we are missing a few productivity modules over here. I'm not sure exactly where, but I I know I have some in the train um, and some beacons as well. So let's grab oh, only 14. Okay, it's not terribly many. Uh, and where are the beacons and productivity modules missing from? Where am I missing beacons? I don't think I'm missing any beacons here. It might be that alert might be coming from somewhere else. Yeah, it all looks complete here. Ah, uh, I forgot to get rail. signals. Yeah, I do. Okay, now we can continue. Not 
sure exactly how far this needs to come out. Let's see. Uh, I think we need to go a bit farther, I would say. Um, hmm. Well, I think I'll just come as far out as this stone patch. So we'll put down like one more segment and then we'll have to think about turning north. Okay, and the turn north I will do with a junction. Okay, let's shorten that. Let's shorten it again. There. That way if I need to continue the rail for any reason, I've already got the, the stub there. Okay, and then this can come north up this way. And we'll just take it until it gets fairly close. Okay, that's close enough for now. Okay, so now if I call my plastic train and I tell it to go up here, I should have a clear path. Right, and I think the fact that that path, yeah, that that path is appearing there and it's green, that means that I do have a path to get there. Okay, so that's a good sign. I'm not gonna send it up there yet. Um, okay, this rail layout is starting to get a little bit complicated, but it's still Still fairly simple, I suppose. Okay, so uh, where should we put the red circuits? This entire stacker is for nothing more than green circuits, right? I might want to move this and have red circuits. Well, no, let's go north because we've already got, you know, we're using a lot of horizontal space and we've got all this space up above us to work. So maybe I'll put the red circuits up there. Um, let me check my calculator and see how many of those machines we're going to need. Uh, we are going to need 74.3. So, at least 75. Uh, that is an awful lot of machines. I think over here we've got 80. Yeah, so that's going to be, that's going to take up a fair amount of space. Um, and I think what we could do is build above all these green circuits. Okay, so let's try something here. One, two, I'm not sure how much of a gap I'm going to need yet. Let's see if we can do this with no gaps. Is that right? Well, it's hard to say. Yeah, this would be, that would be maximum comp compression, I suppose. And we could either put it there or here or whatever. I guess, yeah, I think it would be better to put it farther away. All right, this will be red circuits. It is going to contain productivity modules, which I do not have. And then these will all have speed modules, which I don't have. 
All right, and then we can put, you know what, how many, I need to figure out how many, I need to figure out how many machines I'm gonna need to make copper wire. That's probably what I should do first is make copper wire. Let's see, that's gonna be <clears throat> 8,310. Uh, so let's try something here. So I'm just copying my calculator, and I'm sorry you can't see this. Uh, you're not missing a whole lot though. So 8,310 red circuits a minute. That's, I get 74.2. I think that's different than 8310. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, 74.3 is what I said before. Okay. So that means I'm going to need 18, 19 machines making copper wire to feed all these. So I think I should do like, I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many am I going to need? 18. So I can do a couple rows of copper wire makers. Or I could just set them all like this and have dedicated copper wire machines like I do with the greens. I mean, that would be, that would be overkill. But it would be a lot easier on the bots because it'll be, it'll be a lot easier to move the copper plates than it will be to move the copper wire because there are far fewer of them. Right, so we could, we could just do this. And have copper wires there, have red circuits there. These could even be blue machines. Well, but blue, blue doesn't take four modules, does it? I think blue only takes two modules. Yeah, blue will only take two. So I'll leave it with this so we can get all the modules. But yeah, this will be this will be overkill for sure. So we could probably do that with one inserter. All right, copy paste that. That'll be the same. Just copper wire, copper plates in, uh, copper wire out. Uh, and in fact, if we move this over, yeah, this is even better. Make that the red circuits. That way we can use the same chest for the plastic. All right, so we'll replace that with copper plate. It was 290. You know, and then we'll make this like 120, 120, something like that. Okay, so that way we can use the same chest for all the ingredients. And then have our output. Limit that to a single stack. Actually, let's, let's limit it to five. That way we can buffer some of it. No, let's go with one. I don't need buffers. I just need, I need mass production. That's what I need. Okay, yeah, and then I can just put that there in the middle, I suppose. Right? And then, you know, we can just, we can like put a RoboPort next to each one of these, next to each row. Yeah, look at that. Red circuits already. 
I think that plastic came from my uh, my trash lot. All right, uh, let's remove these and replace it with the moduled version. There we go. Okay, so I'll come back with productivity modules and then we can copy this. So we'll need 80 of these. And like I said, that's, that's a lot of overkill on the production of copper wire, but it'll be easier for the bots to manage it because rather than bringing, you know, rather than carrying, what do we need? For every circuit, we need four copper cables, which is two copper plates, you know, minus the productivity bonus. So it's like one point something copper plate for every red circuit. So the bots will only have to move, I don't know, let's say two copper plates for every two red circuits versus having to move eight copper cables for every red circuit. So it'll be, it'll be better logistically to do it that way. Okay, well, I think that's going to do it for this time. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll continue this in the next episode. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.